This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip to tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on-screen shoutouts, access to members-only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to be doing our draft recap. The Baltimore Ravens had nine picks in the 2024 NFL draft, and we're going to talk about the nine picks and my grades, and then we're going to have an overall grade at the end of it. So let's get into it, you know, starting with the first pick, pick number 30 in the first round, and the Baltimore Ravens selected Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. Now, we all wanted offensive line help or some even wanted receiver help. With both of those positions being very deep, and there was a run of receivers early, there was a run on offensive line, mainly tackle early. But what was unexpected was the run on quarterbacks. And so at you know the, the middle part of the first round, I was thinking there would be some tackles there that really could jump in and start for the Baltimore Ravens. But by the time it got to pick 30, there were really no first round tackles that you can say, hey, let's get. There was maybe JPJ there, but I think his uh, medicals scared a lot of people off. And so when it got to pick 30, I really think Nate Wiggins was the best player on the board. And for us to get the a top three corner at pick 30, I think it was a really, really good pick. And then so bringing Nate Wiggins in, he's going to compete with um, Marlon Humphreys, uh, Brandon Stevens for, for playing time, but also with these other guys listed right here with uh, Jalen Loma Davis, with uh, Demarion Williams, Pepe Williams, with even with the other rookie that we selected in the fourth round, TJ Tampa. Uh, I think it puts some of those guys on notice that, hey, your time, um, if you can't stay healthy, your time is probably about here. Uh, with TJ Tampa and, and Nate Wiggins, hey, you guys can come in, stay healthy, get on the field. You can push these other guys up out of here that can't seem to stay up out of the training room. So I think the addition of Nate Wiggins is he's going to push time to play with the starters. He's going to allow Marlon to be more flexible to play slot and outside corner. And TJ Tampa's going to come in and do some of that too. So TJ Tampa could probably be that fourth corner to come in and do some things and uh, beat Pepe Williams and Jalen Loma Davis, Arthur Morlett, and uh, some other guys out too, uh, even – some, some guys we just picked up. So moving on to the second round. We picked up Roger Rosengarten. Right tackle from the University of Washington. Uh, he was a part of the, the best O-line in football, according to some pub publications. Uh, slender guy, ran the fastest 40 at the combine, but that doesn't really matter when it comes to O-line. Didn't give up a sack in two years which is an amazing thing. Uh, he needs to put some more weight on in order to, you know, handle the rigmarole of the NFL schedule. But I think an overall good pick. Um, at the point that we got to him at uh, pick 62, there were two guys that I felt like would have been suitable picks for him. Kingsley, Sadamaraia from BYU, and Roger Rosengarten. And we had the choice to pick either one of those, and I don't think either pick would have been bad. So given this pick, I think this pick would be a minus a-, because the way the board fell, I think we knocked this pick out the park too. Um, I really like what he brings to the table. I just think he needs to add more strength to it because he has a, a great pass pro background. He needs to get better at run blocking. But what Washington did with their zone stuff, I think it fits to where we're going as an offensive team as far as who he's going to battle with uh you'll see it on the screen he's going to battle with um daniel falele and pat mccarr for that right guard spot and i think he can actually win that spot depending on how well training camp goes i think falele will go in as the starter mccarr has the most experience but i think roger rosengarten has the best chance to go in and win that right tackle uh spot All right, our third pick, at pick number 93, Adisa Isaac, edge from Penn State. Now, Penn State edges scare me because of 
uh, Dolphin Oway and what he has not done in his first couple of years with the Baltimore Ravens. And then Chop Robinson kind of scares me because he rushes really to me with no plan, even though he has a ton of good get off and he, you know, kind of disrupts a lot of plays, but he just doesn't have, have the production that you like. But we got one in Adisa Isaac. And I'm giving this pick a B. And I'm going to tell you why I'm giving it a B. Because two people I trust in this in this draft evaluation circuit say it's a good pick. Now I'm gonna tell you why I was kind of I'm kind of skeptical on it because I watched the Ohio State game and I saw a guy out there getting a lot of cardio with the exception of right around the 13 minute mark he had some good plays on the tackle and got um, a PBU which probably would have been a sack fumble had he got there half a second earlier. But Chris just joking said it was a good pick when we made the pick. And then all 22 cuts put, um, actually he DM'd me his um, thread that he started last night with different plays with Adisa Isaac in it also. And going through that, and I trust him. And I will be looking at the other two games I got. I got the Michigan game and I got something else. But he had some other games where he showed Isaac and really showed some really good plays uh, of Adisa Isaac. And so I'm going to give this pick a, a, a C plus for now. And um, based just off the strength of what Chris said and what all 22 could say, and um, I'm going to give it some time. But as far as the guys he'll be competing with, you know, to get on the field, David Ojabo, who we don't really know what we got in so far, uh, Tavius Robinson, who I really liked his progression last year, uh, working with Dr. Rush and those other guys, he really progressed. Uh, I didn't think we would get anything out of him. He looked like a really decent football player toward the end of last year came through with some pass rush moves end up with a sack maybe a half a second half last year so i'm excited to see what the jump is from year one to year two with tavis robinson and malik ham who was injured most of the year he'll be in that rotation also all right around four at pick 113 we got our wide receiver devontez walker who battled with the ncaa to even get on the field this year with north carolina but he eventually got on and game four or five maybe i think he ended up playing eight games with north carolina this year and we picked him in the fourth round with one at 113 von walker and i think that was a home run pick uh we could have gotten a receiver earlier but we held on to the fourth round and we got one of the few remaining guys that i think can make an impact this year and the wide receiver class was loaded 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 this year and we got a guy that will serve what I think will serve a role with this team. He doesn't have the complete route package, but we have a guy that can actually take the top off the offense, and we got enough guys that can do the other little things to help us be successful. We got a guy that can maybe get us 25 to 35 catches, get you about three or 400 yards, but all of those yards could be big plays. We got a guy that can just take safeties with him, and then you got enough other guys to work underneath stuff and intermediate stuff you got you know zay and mark and and likely and all those other guys enough to do the dirty work underneath but you got a guy that can can get over top and run deep posts run deep goals and make the defense really be honest and you got enough weapons to do the underneath dirty work but as far as the guys he'll be competing with for reps you know rashad bateman who just signed that extension uh for three more years and also nelson aguilar who resigned for one more year so those will be the guys he'll be competing with reps with because I think in our system, Zay is the really number one um, option. And he'll be, you know, competing with Aguilar and Bateman for, for reps, especially if we do the, more of the two tight end stuff with Likely and uh, Mark Andrews. But our fourth, our, I'm sorry, our first fourth round selection was Devontae Walker from um, North Carolina. Second fourth round selection at pick number 130 was T.J. Temple. Now I was surprised at this pick. But I really like it. I think TJ Tampa is a versatile cornerback. I think he's more of a zone corner. I think he's a great option with his length. I think he's a great tackler. I think he's a high IQ corner. I think he's a guy that can fit in that room to help push those guys out that just can't seem to stay healthy. Uh, you as this saying, you can never have enough good corners, and I think he's really one of the good corners. And for him to still be there in the fourth round, I think it was a no-brainer to go ahead and pick him up. I really, I really do. Uh, the fact that we got him in the fourth round at 130, I give this grade, I'm sorry, I give this pickup a grade of B. 
And I think still at this point, a lot of people, you know, are mad at EDC because we hadn't gotten enough offensive line help. But just the way it fell at this point, I think DaCosta was cooking. And, you know, I, I was happy, still really happy at this point with the way the draft was going for us. And I'm, I'm one that wanted a lot of offensive line help. But at this point in the draft, I'm ecstatic. You know, we got good help. And, you know, even though we got more defensive help than offensive help, I'm happy, at, at, like, losing my mind happy at, at where we're going so far. All right, we get to the fifth round, and we pick Rasheen Ali out of Marshall. And I felt like we needed a backup running back to go with Derrick Henry because we don't know when uh, Keaton Mitchell is going to be back. We, You know, Justice Hill is, is a solid person, but we still a solid player, but we still needed something else to go in that room. And um, Rasheen Ali, they run a lot of zone stuff at, at, at Marshall. He was very productive. At Marshall, I feel like he'll fit what we're going to because I'm a believer that we're headed more towards zone stuff. And so I, it felt like a perfect fit to get a guy that was familiar with that style of play. And he was very productive at Marshall. Um, I Still, at this point, I think DaCosta's cooking. He's getting stuff that fits the transition to what the team is going to. Uh, again, hadn't picked O-line yet, but at this point in the draft, the O-line you get now, they're all projects. So I'm still cool with where we're going. We, we're getting guys that fit where your team is going. I'm liking the draft so far. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with where we're headed. I'm happy with the, the, the picks. I'm like, hey, you're taking, you're taking, even though you, I think you're doing best player available, you're doing best player available for what you're trying to do as your team. You ain't just grabbing the best player available and he don't fit your scheme. So I, I'm liking where we're going. I, I, I feel like we're still cooking here. Then we get to round six. We pick up Devin Leary, the quarterback from Kentucky. Not only do I feel like we stop cooking at this point, I feel like we leave the kitchen wholeheartedly. Like, I, I know he's fairly accurate. High completion percentage. You know, slaying around a little bit. I don't get the purpose of a quarterback. I just, maybe I don't see the vision. I, I just, I don't see the purpose of quarterback at this point. So, with this pick, it's probably my first bad grade right here. I, I'm giving this a, a D. I just I, I don't see where this fits. I just don't, I, I it baffled me. I'm like, what what's going on right here? Like you could have went a, a bunch of different ways right here. You could have went. This is where you could have picked a project offensive lineman. This is where your special teamers come in at. Quarterback. And when I mean special teams, I mean like your, your linebackers, your safeties, or something like that to run down and do different stuff like that. Because we got kicker and punter and stuff like that. So I'm giving this a D. And I really want to give it an F, but I'm gonna, I am probably won't pass out an F unless it's just straight booty. Get to the seventh round. We got two picks in the seventh round. The next one is Nick Samak, S-A-M-A-C. And I really want to give, give, give this one an F too. But I'm not going to give it an F because I don't know how long he's going to be out. And yes, I said out. This young man injured his tibula or fibula late in the season. And we all know that's big bone in your leg. And I'm not a fan of drafting hurt players. Again. Offensive lineman. Again. Couldn't participate in any of the draft process stuff because of his leg with Voorhees last year now I don't know what where Voorhees is right now I'm sure he's going to be you know he'll be Voorhees will be in the mix this year to to try to win that left guard spot or any spot on the O-line and I hope I hope Voorhees comes back and dominates I hope he does because I haven't seen him play at all but I'm not a fan of this draft that hurt 
Ojabo. We ain't seen much from Ojabo. We drafted him hurt. We ain't seen much from Ojabo other than in the training room. I'm just not a fan of this drafting hurt people. And again, not only are we not cooking anymore, we have left the kitchen completely. We on the verge of actually leaving the house now. All right. Then our last, our last pick, seventh round, Sansui Kane. I can deal with this special teamer safety. Um, needed a, a a backup guy just in case something happened to to um, any one of our guys on the back end. Uh, he can come in and play special teams, run down on punt, be a gunner, uh, be on that kickoff team. I know they're revamping the style of play for kickoff, and um, so I'm, I'm cool with this pick. I give this pick a C because we needed something back there to be able to someone, not something. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Someone back there to compete. Uh, maybe make the team as a special teamer, uh, you know, just in case something happened to any one of those guys, a young cat back there that can make a few plays and, and get in and just, you know, compete. The, just let them guys not be comfortable, uh, you know, and just, just get back there and, and learn because Brent, not Brandon, um, uh, what's my guy? Marcus is older. Uh, contract is on the verge of running out, Not if not this year, maybe the next year. And you need to be on, you know, grooming somebody to come in and take that spot. I don't know if he's going to be the eventual successor, but a plan needs to start being in place. So I'm cool with that. Cool with that on the, on the, the back end. And so overall, uh, the way we started off, super, super hot, like on fire, like super saiyan hot. And then we cooled off completely to the verge of like almost wanting to throw up. So with that being said, we started off at A's and I gave some A's from the top and then I almost borderline wanted to give some F's. So I'm going to give a B minus, man. I think the overall draft grade for the 2024 draft and Eric DaCosta, I give a B minus because I think those first five picks, excellent. And even though I know it wasn't like the O-line heavy draft that we all wanted, the way the draft board fell, fell I think DaCosta did a good job with those first five picks, that being Nate Wiggins, uh, Rosengarten, uh, Adisa Isaac, uh, Tez Walker, TJ Tampa, and even even uh, Rasheen Ali. So the first six picks, great. The last three, ooh. So I give them a B minus, and that's what I got for you, man. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. If you have not liked the video, please do so. If you are not a subscriber, please consider doing so. And if you're not a Patreon member, Please go to patreon.com backslash sip to tally. Join up for any one of those four memberships. And I appreciate you guys, man. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. I'm out.